hello everybody welcome back to my channel today i am back with you with a new video um as you know last week i asked you which photo would you like to see me retouch the most i gave you the option of a b and c and you guys by popular vote chose b so that's what i'm going to be retouching today um i have the two models i think most of you were interested to kind of see how i'm de dealing with two different um skin colors and so on so i'll get right into it okay so first we have this photo and um, i just want to talk about what i want to fix i think i'm going to make sure the outline of the lipsticks is extra sharp um because i want this like really nice crisp look um we have little baby hairs here and kind of around the chin area as most people do uh, we have little bumps and stuff like that. So that's the kind of things we're going to be fixing today um, I'm going to start about creating a duplicate layer and I'm doing that to make sure that I can always You know switch off any changes that I don't like and I have the option to kind of go back and fix whatever needs to be fixed but I think I'm going to start with um, fixing the lipstick and I'm going to do it by opening um liquify and i'm going to fix it in liquify because that's my favorite way of changing that kind of stuff you can do it a few different ways but for me this is my favorite way so i'm going to go there i'm going to select this guy here forward warp tool and i'm just going to go quite small maybe kind of like this not too small okay and now I'm going to kind of get it into the shape I want by pushing and pulling. And usually if you push a tiny bit, it kind of squashes the pixels together. And this way you just get this like really nice sharp line. Obviously you have to be careful not to do it too much because otherwise the textures around the area here are going to stretch. But in general, it should be good. That's my main area of concern and then this area here, maybe I'll get it a bit more flat as well. Because I want it to be really nice and sharp and kind of like a classic shape of a lip if that makes sense. So as you see straight away that's not much better, I'll show you the preview. So it's cleaned up quite a bit and I'm not even finished yet. Now when you need more details you can always go a bit closer. You know, just to make sure that the lipstick isn't bleeding any anywhere and so on. Um I just find it to be a very nice method of doing stuff. It defines the lipstick much more as well and it makes it much sharper, which I really like. So as you can see the difference between this side and this side is quite drastic. You see how nice and sharp it is. So now if I feel that it needs to be a bit filled, I can push it out the other way. Okay, that's much better already, I'll show you. So as you see we're pushing all those kind of rough edges and we make it nice and even. Now just to corner them out here. As you see it just takes a lot of kind of detailed work and a bit of practice, but it's totally worth the effort. I feel this is like the most natural method I could think of to fix the lipstick that I know of anyway. Okay, so a little before and after. As you see, the difference is quite drastic. Now, if there's anything I like to do, like make the lips a bit more um, 
balanced you know kind of have the same width and stuff i can use the same tool as well to kind of pull them up and down i don't really use it to make the lips bigger and s or smaller but it's just if there's anything kind of you know um unequal on one side or the other um then i'll do it this way okay now onto the other lips so we have two sets of lips today so we need to worry about both of them Okay, so that's pretty much for the lipstick. As you see, it is quite defined. Now I'm going to start working on the skin and I'm going to kind of work on the little um, spotsies and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to grab a healing brush this time and I'm just going to sample it and just cover any imperfections. Keep keep sampling and keep staying close to the area that you're retouching to make sure that the color is consistent. So to use healing brush, you just patch, grab a patch of healthy skin and then just cover it with, or cover the bad skin with it. Now, if you find a healthy patch of skin that matches this area, you don't have to keep sampling. If you feel that works, it's obviously all about what works for you. As you see straight away, we have quite a big progress. So as you see, this part by itself took me 32 minutes um, to retouch. I obviously sped it up because I don't want this video to be going on forever, uh, but it is quite a slow process. Now I'm going to move on to dodging and burning. So Alt, New Layer, Soft Light, Fill with 50% Grey, click OK. And now I'm going to start going over any other imperfections that I didn't fix with the brush. So any dark lines, anything like that. I'll put my flow onto tree. Just go over any darker lines in the face and so on, any bumps, anything like that. And I'm going to speed it up as well because it's going to take me probably another 15 minutes to go through it. Um, so I'll see you guys in a second.
Okay, now finally I'm going back to my bottom layer or my duplicate layer. I'm going to sample the skin, put the flow on maybe two or one. And I'm going to go over the skin ever so slightly. It's to even out the skin tone, but not blur out the texture too much. Now, if you think you went too far with your dodging and burning, what you can do is grab a grey colour in the middle and then just erase it this way on the layer. I'm going to take a dark colour and just go over the nostrils a tiny bit, just because I see a few little hairs in there. There's other ways to do it as well, but this is the one that I kind of pick usually. Now I'm going to start with adjustments. So I'm going to look at highlights. Now now I need to be careful because I don't want to overexpose um the model on the left and I want to I don't want to underexpose the model on the right, so I just have to keep that in mind when balancing stuff. That's kinda good. Another thing I'm going to do is brighten the image a tiny bit. I might desaturate their faces a tiny bit because I don't want it to be too intense. So I'm just going to go to maybe minus 12 and then just grab the black brush and I'm just going to go over the lipstick and their eyes. So whatever I want to be more saturated. Now I'm going to add another curve layer and I will add just a tiny bit of contrast. Now that I add the contrast, you just have to keep in mind that the colors might change a tiny bit, so I might actually lower the hue saturation to minus 20, and then maybe add a tiny bit of a yellowish tint, just a tiny bit, so maybe like plus one. Now next I'm going to go to selective color, I'm going to go to blacks, and play a tiny bit with the blacks in the, in the image. I might add a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of green just to balance out the warm tones. Another thing that I would like to try is maybe darken the background because I'm not sure if I'm liking it this color. I think it looks better because it kind of adds to the models. Now the only thing is I didn't select it quite, I selected it quite roughly so what I do is I grab my white brush and just go over the edges to soften it. I might even darken it a bit more and then I might create another duplicate layer to c command J and now I'm just going to bring it back a tiny bit and then erase it from the top corner because I just wanted the bottom corner to match the darkness and now I can bring it down even more maybe to 60 yes so as you see just that by itself command J creates quite a bit of a difference and it just creates it adds more focus to the model models rather than to the background now i'm going to add another selective color and just look into colors on their skin I feel like I over brightened um, the model on the left, so I'm just going to grab my br black brush, just darken her face a little bit. I think that's a bit better. Now, in general, I think I might just put it down a tiny bit. I feel like both of them are too bright. Now, I'm going to create a bit more highlight with dodging and burning. Now the very last thing I want to deal with is just fixing a little bit of this tooth here. Not that it needs to be, but it's just, I think, it's something that I would do. What I might try to do first is just grab the stamp tool and just try and see how it looks if I stamp it on. Now one last thing I can go for the lipstick is grab stamp tool and then maybe just go sample it kind of here and sample it quite small and then just go over the edge here 
just to create a nice sharp edge on the lipstick. So now I grab a pure red brush and just go over the line a tiny bit to brighten it a tiny bit. Then I might go and do it at the other edge as well to define it a tiny bit. So again, just sample kind of here and then just go over the edge. Okay, and then just blur it out with more similar color. And as you see, the lipstick is way more defined now. Now finally, one last curve layer. Just deepen the blacks a tiny bit. Okay, so now I'm going to put all the curve layers into a group so you can check it out. So this is the before and after on the actual photo when it comes to color grading. This is the dodge and burn. And now this is the skin adjustments. As you see, the lips are quite drastic. Finally, I'm just going to crop a tiny bit. Okay, guys, this is it. This is the final image before and after. Dealing with the lipstick. I find like this corner here was really nicely fixed with a little color. Just to find it much more. The skin is lovely and smooth, but it still has a bit of texture. We darkened the background. So yeah, I think it looks really good. Okay guys, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I will see you next time.